Okay, so uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our session. The session calls operators experience and perspective on SDN with VLANs and free, uh, free networks, where we would like to show you the perspective of our experience in operating different solutions, uh, different SDN solution in different customer environments and what we tested and how we built the uh, infrastructure. Uh, the presentation agenda, uh, at first something about TCP Cloud, what's the company, what we are doing. Oh, sorry, it's a bad presenter. Uh, something about uh, Workday, uh, then uh, several worlds, why it's like, what's happening here. The presenter, it's, I don't know, it started to. I will use it without presenter. So, uh, something about OpenStack networking, the key points. Then the criteria for the enterprises, because we have more than 15 or 20 enterprise customers and they have different needs, so we will bring the perspective on this. And then the use cases. And the finally, we try to do small comparison, uh, our personal comparison of, of uh, SDNs. So what is TCP Cloud? Uh, I don't know if was someone uh, was at yesterday keynote, but uh, we are a company which focusing on building private cloud solutions for the enterprise customers. And uh, we are also, we have two uh, domains. One is private clouds based on OpenStack. And second is IoT, uh, Internet of Things platform where we integrate this. Uh, open source uh, projects together. We will uh, today talk more about the networking stuff and OpenStack. And something about Workday. This session should be with Edgar Magana from Workday. Unfortunately, he cannot be here because he was voted into user committee and they have some parallel meeting. So Edgar will not be there. So instead of him is the, uh, my colleague Marek, who is uh, chief network engineer in TCP Cloud. So the Workday is the customer who used the uh, Juniper Contrail SDN. Uh, it's, it's a public reference. And uh, maybe what's, what's the interesting that uh, they use the L3 fabric uh, everywhere. So they don't use the VLANs, but they have uh, underlay network based on L3 fabric. And then they put uh, on top the, the Juniper Contrail. And now let's jump on the networking. So all clouds are about networking. And every time when we speak with the customer and we are doing some case, we are discussing stuff about networking. Yeah, it's the most controversial and problematic part because uh, there's a lot of plugins. And everyone has a different environment, hybrid environment. And it's, it's really difficult. And you usually have to solve issues like high availability, scalability, <coughs> migration, multi-tenancy between the environment. And together with OpenStack networking comes the NFV and function like usually load, load balancing as a service, firewall as a service, VPNs as a service. And what's the most important is that there is more than, I try to count the plugins, and there is more than 30 or 40 networking plugins, and every year there is new SDN solution, which says, yeah, this is the best SDN than other SDNs, and we are working with OpenStack, and you should try it, you should do this, 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 every vendor says something else. So it's uh, completely impossible for someone who wants to try it, uh, choose which is suitable. So we will try to give you our perspective of viewing how we see this. So if you look at the last OpenStack survey, you can recognize that the most of environments are open on open vSwitch. The open vSwitch uh, is used usually for the public clouds, for the environments with the VLANs, sometimes with the VXLANs. And from the historic perspective, it was very difficult to make the open vSwitch and Neutron working in the operation because of centralized network node. Nowadays, when is the DVR solution, it's m much better to manage it. And then they are, there are a lot of many other plugins. Uh, the first vendor plugin is the Open Contrail, and uh, we will speak about this solution in this presentation too. 
So the general SDN objectives when we uh, came to any customer, it's like uh, we need the secure multi-tenancy solution with network isolation, with the policy driven, we need to get the bare metal server inside, we want to manage dynamically and schedule VM, attaching the ports, create policy between the networks, the security groups, it must be dynamic, you need to have a clickable and orchestrated solution with, with VNF, with inside with the plugin. So this is the general objectives, what everyone usually have, like you and you are starring. But what are the critical points? I think that the first step is you need to decide if you want to use overlay or not overlay. If we start with the VLANs, there is a limit. You have 4,000 VLANs, I know it's too much for some environment, but m most of big customer has an issue with this. There is no failure isolation domain. It's, it's difficult for the managing. And our experience is that the companies are separated into departments. So you have network department, storage department, and when you need to have a new VLANs, it's difficult to orchestrate bare metal. Uh, devices, uh, in a lot of cases, customers has a different boxes, and so it's, it's, it's a complicated, so it's a VLANs. The second one is the overlay, the after VLAN came the overlay, so it's simple, you don't need to usually configure the, the network boxes because you have encapsulation, VXLAN, GRE, MPLS over, GRE, uh, many encapsulation and one controller which orchestrate everything. And this is most of SDN, like you recognize here, like Plum Grid, Midonet, EMN NSX, uh, Nuage Networks, and maybe much more. And then recently they realized the new SDN solutions, which started to talking about no overlay, overlay is bad, bad yeah? Two years ago, or one year ago, everyone's spoke about overlay, yeah, overlay is great, use overlay, everything must be there. And now I'm coming into market and I can see that no overlay is bad, it must be some intelligent IPv6, not translation between this. So it's a project uh, Calico and Romana, and from my point of view, it's more for the really Cloudify workloads, like application which don't need L2 connection, don't need live migration, which is almost impossible in some enterprises to build a cloud for them without live migration, no IP failure. So you're just launching cloud native application and if you lost one, you redeploy anyone else and you, you don't care what's the IP address. And I think it's, it's a future. It's a future for the containers, for the Kubernetes, for the, these orchestration plugins when uh, you don't care where is it and what's the IP address? You just want to know where is your service endpoint. So from our perspective, the VLANs are not so suitable for the cloud for most of our customers because VLANs are static and we cannot replicate an overlap solution next to other. The developers need to launch multiple same environments next to it so it's not possible. And the uh, Calico and uh, Romana is the future, and we don't have a use case in, in real enterprise customers. So we will talk about the overlay and overlay solution and compare them here in this session. So the key criteria for the enterprises from our point of view is the usually some functions like load balancing as a service, so, so the application must be load balanced, so is there the solu is inside of the solution some load balancing? Then the direct traffic data path, which was the most critical thing in a couple releases before Juno, and even in Juno is what not in the production with Open vSwitch, the direct data path from the north-south. You have to go through some network node, failure of the network node, and I remember that we, when we have had it in the production, we, we could not sleep because uh, it, usually it's, it, it, it was very difficult to make it up and running. <clears throat> then, uh, north-south communications, this is the next point. Look at the SDN and think about if your SDN goes through the network node, if the vendor has some appliance, some special appliance which can be scalable or if it can be integrated into edge router, existing network devices. This is, I think, it's important. Then, multiple external networks. How easily you can create 
multiple networks because in enterprise uh, customers you cannot came and say them you will have just floating IP pool with not and that's it yeah, so think about external networks then performance and scaling uh, is there any reference or customer who has more than 50 nodes or it's just SDN with just one booth and with the nice party? So this is, this is very important. And then the bare metal connection because a lot of workloads, especially, especially databases and some other appliances cannot be put it into cloud, so they need to get uh, them out. And then there are some SDN optionals for some service providers, or, or optional requirements. Uh, the first one, the open source, for me, is the most important, uh, but it's not critical for others. But for me, it's most important, because when it's open source, a lot of people can use it. You can f find the use cases. You can contribute it. You can see the whole the development. It's not the behind the wall that some couple of people developing something can show you the slides, and you cannot take it, try it. So it, it's difficult, and you never know what vendor will do. Then uh, L3 VPN, eVPN capabilities. Most of service provider requires from us to get the L2 VPN in their network, in their uh, virtual machine. And then the recent stuff, a multi-cloud solution. Marek will talk about use case and architecture, how we build a multi-cloud integrated solution with SDN. Integration of the physical load balancers. Most of company needs to have SSL offloading directly on the hardware, not in the virtual machine, so it's the next stuff. And then some IPv6 support and Intel DPDK to increase packet per seconds uh, into your uh, routers and SRIOV, so it's, it's a new feature stuff. So let's talk more about two solution, which after we give you this requirement, I am sure that you will find maybe two SDN vendor solution which are suitable. And and we took the open contrail because Workday used the open contrail and contrail, and most of our customers, 90% customers, running on the open source contrail. And we will compare it a little bit with the DVR. So if you look at this slide, you can see that the, it's not easy to understand, usually, for someone who starts why your instance is attached to the Linux bridge, then it's Tab port goes to some QVO port, then to QVR port, then you go into br internal bridge, then you go into VLAN and goes outside. So it's, it's difficult to debug it. You don't have any analytics, you have nothing, and you will be, if you want to operate this, you have to have very good know-how and, and knowledge, and it's, it's very complex. Yeah? By the way, Linux Bridge is used because OVS in tap its interface is not able to uh, work with IP tables, so they put in Linux Bridge between the solution. So it's, it's very, very, very complex, and it's L2. If you use DVR, you need to bring your external network into each compute node in your infrastructure, because otherwise, uh, it will not work. So you can imagine that it's very difficult to put multiple external network yeah, in, in, in your infrastructure. So I think that the use case for this is for uh, uh, companies, the, uh, we need just one external network, simple solution, and not so big. So this is, this is my opinion. And if we compare it with, the, with the, another open source solution, Open Contrail, you can see that the VM is just connected to the vRouter, to the tap interface. There are uh, virtual routing forwarding tables for each network. It's fully L3, it's, it's overlay, and uh, you can have fully L3 fabric. So you don't have to use any VLAN in your infrastructure, and everything can be L3, routable, <coughs> direct connection between them. It doesn't use IP tables. Yeah, because if you boot, boot 60 VMs on the server and five IP tables rules for every chain, so five, five uh, times 50, so IP tables are also not so very used for the scaling. Here are IP tables directly in the, in the vRouter, so this is, this is the difference. 
So, uh, last my point before I get the word to my colleague is that the very good point is to have a direct data path from your VM, not only bit inside of the cloud, but also on the outside. So, no network node, I think DVR fixed this issue, but no also appropriate, uh, proprietary gateway node. We have experience with two customers which tried some different SDN solution, and they have a lot of issue with integrating external network through the appliances. Even if you can scale your appliances, vendor solution appliances for, for four VMs or four uh, bare metal machines, you cannot get 9.6 gigabit throughput from your virtual machine outside of the cloud, which is possible when you do the routing on the routers and not routing on the servers. And I think that routers are here for the routing. So uh, this is encapsulation, usually MPLS over GRAN, and VXLAN with EVPN stitching. So for example, open contrail can be used with any network, vendor, Cisco, uh, Juniper MX, uh, Alcatel. We tested uh, all these devices and terminate network there. So this is uh, from my site. So uh, Marek will explain more about other use cases what we did. Okay, thanks. Uh, the first thing I want to tell you are, are the considerations. Can you, let's talk for a second. Yeah. Do we need everybody that can uh, sit in the chair to get in the chair? So we got a fire marshal. It's just too many people standing. So just you guys standing in the back, sitting on the floor, just fill in these spaces. There's a lot of open chairs here in the middle. And uh, it will be a little bit safe. Okay. <coughs> it's okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, as I said, uh, there are a few considerations uh, you can do to have a better network performance between the virtual machines running on the different hypervisors. And the first one is uh, the encapsulation you use. With OVS, you got uh, only VXLAN. Uh, with OpenControl, you have a VXLAN as well, but also MPLS over GRE and MPLS over UDP. Uh, we are actually using uh, these two uh, encapsulations because uh, the performance is much better than the VXLAN. Uh, it's mainly because uh, of the hardware offloading that suits better for uh, like UDP and uh, GRE than to the VXLAN. And we only use a VXLAN if we want a north-south traffic uh, from uh, the contrail to the MX routers or other routers to get uh, L2 stretched all, uh, all over the uh, all over data center. So, uh, and when we are talking about scaling uh, nodes and scaling the network, uh, I think that you will first run into the performance issues with Rabbit rather than uh, the networking issues with contrail. So uh, we actually sometimes switch off the analytics uh, at the contrail because it gets really chatty. No. Okay. Uh, now I, I would like to tell you something uh, about the features that uh, are brought by uh, the third party SDN controllers like Open Contrail. Uh, and the first one is uh, multi cloud networking. Uh, you can take like uh, two different cloud providers like uh, OpenStack and Kubernetes and connect them together through single SDN platform. Uh, as you can see in the picture, uh, we can connect uh, OpenStack together with Kubernetes. So uh, the virtual machines uh, directly communicate with the Docker containers. And uh, another use case can be uh, having two separate open stacks, for example, on different geographical locations. And you want to uh, have the virtual machines on the same network so they can communicate uh, on the same virtual network. So this is how you can do it. Uh, and the stuff behind this actually are pretty simple. Uh, control controllers use uh, 
use well-known BGP protocol to exchange the routing information. So the only thing you do, you actually create the BGP peering between the, uh, between the control controllers. Uh, so uh, the control controller actually doesn't even know that uh, there is another controller behind it. He actually does, doesn't uh, give a damn whether it is a router or another controller. It just uh, uses BGP to exchange the, the information. Okay, so what can you do with that? For example, uh, here we got the Kubernetes and uh, OpenStack together federated by Contrail and uh, you can have applications running on a Kubernetes because uh, that's what our container is good for. And, but you want to have a backend databases running on the VMs. So how can you do that? Uh, you actually can do it with Contrail by the BGP peerings. And uh, if you, you are familiar with uh, MPLS, L3 or L2 VPNs, you know that uh, actually what it takes is to put the root target uh, under, the, uh, under the VRF. So uh, to do that, we only need to go uh, into the control controller of uh, OpenStack and put the, put the root target and then go to the Kubernetes controller and put the same root target and then can the containers communicate with the databases on a like same network is L3 or L2. Okay, uh, another use case uh, that is quite good uh, is uh, how to connect the legacy world to the cloud. Uh, you maybe have uh, applications, uh, maybe some kind of uh, databases, Oracle databases, which can, which can be virtualized but sometimes you want to communicate with them uh, on layer two. So how can you do that? Uh, there is a possibility uh, with uh, OVSDB, uh, Contrail can uh, manage uh, physical boxes with, uh, via OVSDB. So you say which physical port belongs to which virtual, uh, to which virtual network and then every traffic that goes to the uh, that goes to the um, interface is uh, switched uh, to the virtual machine. So uh, and it's not uh, vendor dependent. So uh, you can use it like Juniper switches, or we test it also with OpenV switch. We put OpenV switch on a bare metal server, and we managed it with Open Control. All right. The another stuff is uh, <clears throat> managing the physical load balancers like F5. Uh, maybe uh, you saw it with uh, another vendors that they tell you that they can actually manage the physical balancers, but it's actually through their uh, UI. So you just go to another dashboard and. Uh, you know, create balancers over there, but I think that that's not the benefit. Uh, you can actually do it from F5 dashboard. I think that the key benefit is that uh, you should be able to uh, manage physical uh, physical F5 or other balancers uh, via uh, heat. So you can have heat resources to actually manage the physical balancers. Yeah. Uh, this actually works with the open contrail. So as you can see in the picture, you go to the MX routers and from MX routers to the F5 and then you are just happening back to the router or you can go whatever else you want. Okay, uh, the next thing uh, that uh, people are handling <coughs> nowadays is uh, uh, how to use IPv6 in cloud. Not uh, every solution supports that. Uh, Open Contrail have the full IPv6 support. And uh, not only with the virtual machines in the cloud, but also you can expand it outside to, uh, to the routers. 
uh, is just another family protocol if you, you are using multi-protocol BGP. So uh, you just uh, enable IPv6 tunneling on the routers and, and you, you got it. Okay, Jacob. Yes, so we have the last five minutes. So this slide just show how we are deploying the OpenStack. Uh, it's a logical model, uh, if I briefly explain. This yellow are the <coughs> OpenStack APIs and RubyMQ virtual machines. Everything is virtualized. We are separating. Uh, we have different approach than other vendors. We are virtualizing and separating all the OpenStack services. So <coughs> this is the OpenStack APIs. Then we have three virtual machines with Silometer with MongoDB because sometimes Silometer uh, broke up everything, so you want to still have the functional of your cloud. So we're separating this. Then we're separating proxies with the Horizon and SSL proxies, which proxy from outside of the world traffic to the inside, to the Nginx. Then we have graphite, data, graphite servers for the collecting metrics uh, from the cloud for our billing system and automatically integrated monitoring system based on open source monitoring framework. And these six virtual machines are for the open contrail. So we are running three, two Cassandra clusters. Three virtual machines are for con contrail config and control and three virtual machines are for analytics for the collecting metrics from the cloud. Uh, this picture shows the cluster deployment. I will skip it. And this is the uh, last slide where I tried to a little bit compare the solutions. So as I mentioned, the important is the licensing. So the contrail is fully open sourced. No any limitation like other open source SDN. Uh, same like DVR. Uh, the hypervisor orchestrator, we showed that we are able to scale your Apache server on the Docker containers and your database is running on the virtual machines on the OpenStack very easily. So it supports the Kubernetes because Docker itself, support for the Docker itself doesn't make sense for us. The, future, the only one case how you can use the Docker is through some orchestrator like Mesos or, or, or Kubernetes. Uh, also support uh, VMware vCenter. Uh, this is same for DVR, but DVR had some limitation because VMware doesn't want to have uh, so much support in DVR because you should buy the NSX. And uh, other SDN also support the VMware. The support of VMware is uh, every time is through the virtual machine on the e ESX node. All traffic has to go through this virtual machine, uh, except uh, NSX, because all other vendors are, cannot go into VMware kernel because it's not approved. So they have service machine on each hypervisor to route traffic outside. Then the gateway routing. As I said, we are able to integrate this solution and attach your floating IP directly on edge routers in your DC and create any kind of VPN. Uh, in DVR, you have to bring your external network in each compute. And other SDNs doesn't have features for the floating IP association directly through the edge routers. And it's easy because they usually prefer the VXLAN. I, many times I came with the customer and they told me, we need the VXLAN. I, asked them why, and they said because vendor said that VXLAN is the future. I think that MPLS over GR is fine, and as Marek said, the offloading on the Intel cards, especially on old one, Intel cards is much better for, than for VXLAN. And the performance, we are in, near the line speed with the solution in the VMs. Uh, it's east-west traffic, also north-south traffic. And when we tested DVR, we, we had some issue and we was not able to go through the six gigabits. And when I discussed it with uh, other people who used that, they uh, bought special NIC cards, which provided uh, better offloading for them. So, 
So this is it, and Adidas DN, because they have appliances and not routers, they are also not able to go in one, uh, uh, one session and get this uh, powerful performance. So uh, yes, uh, we are using the VR Open Contrail contributors, and uh, the SDN conclusion is that for us overlay still makes sense because customer requires a lot of this feature and they are not able I cannot came to customer and says no live migration, no L2, no this stuff. So it's almost impossible. So there must be overlay. And overlay brings the great integration between VM and containers, which you could see on my keynote that we from Raspberry Pi created MPLS over GRE tunnel to the data center in Europe directly from the Docker container from this conference. So it's it's uh, pretty cool. So join us, uh, our community. Uh, it's huge on the on the Slack. The, the customers are growing. I think that a lot of big enterprises, it's running in the production, like AT and T and 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 other references. What was mentioned on the summit. So yes, uh, and I would like to say that it's not about Juniper as I usually also get in question that we are paid by Juniper, we are not paid by Juniper. We just realized that this work. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any question, please ask. There is mics, two mics, where you can ask the questions. You mentioned that you sometimes found the analytics and the flow chatty and the internal. <coughs> Did, you, did I understand that you turned it down because of that? Can you say a little more about that? Yeah. Um, in the release of the Contrail 2.1 uh, or something like that, we, we had some issues in the analytics because the, it sent information in each flow. So it doubleized the traffic. And uh, we also have had uh, analytics integrated with the control and config together. And we have one Cassandra cluster for everything, and it completely destroyed the environment. So we had to separate uh, it into two Cassandra clusters. And for some cases, we disabled, but the new version, uh, which was released, has a special flow um, mapping. And there are significant improvements in, in, in this analytics. But yes, we, we had to disable it. Yeah. So every, every software has some, some uh, every solution has some mistakes. So in our internal cloud, we, 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 we disabled analytics. But uh, at our customers, they, they require usually that. So it, it's running there. Yes. Hi, thank you for your presentation. So I have a question. Um, I understood the advantage of the overlay uh, network-based system, uh, OpenStack-based system, but uh, uh, I'd like to know your opinion about uh, L3, pure L3-based network as you presented uh, at the beginning of this presentation. So in terms of the you know, advantage of the you know, difference between the overlay network and pure L3 network. Uh, yeah, the, as I mentioned, the, the, if you mean, you mean the Calico and uh, Romana, yeah. Yeah, as I said, it's the future, and I would like to use that, but the use case, the, the, the customers need the L2, for example, between the VMs. And as I mentioned, the Calico and this stuff is more suitable for the Mm, containers and for the cloud native application, the applications which are which was developed in this way. But if you come to standard enterprise nowadays, where mostly there is VMware uh, vCenter, and they think that they can take it like this and put it there, and everything running, uh, it's not possible. And you need to do some changes. And what you cannot tell them is that. There will not be any any your features what you are using and switch here. So this is the reason. 
Hi, sorry, not a question. Uh, just related to that, I thought I'd just add that actually Project Calico does now support VM live migration as of the last year or so. Uh, support? Yes. Yeah, 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 so, yeah sorry. It's, it's, it's possible okay. to support uh, live migration, yeah. Uh, I like this project, yeah. It's not like that I, I don't like it. Yeah. I really like this new approach and I would like to use it. Yeah. And in some cases, we are now trying to, uh, to get it to customer. Yeah. So, so Romana doesn't support live migration, sorry. So is there any other question? Thank you for your attention. Thanks.